The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi there, and this is Nick Harvey, um, and we've got the whole of the HRP team uh, on this webinar. In this presentation, we're going to show you how to use LogScope and how it can help you with WitsML uh, on Windows and iOS machines. After that, we're going to show you how you can do a basic, simple composite plot. And then we're going to show some simple curve functionality, some editing, and then a cross section. Following this, I'm going to go into the uh, petrophysical functionality. Uh, a couple of things to note. I'm using a MacBook Pro and I'm using Parallels on the MacBook Pro in coherence mode, which allows me to show LogScope on both the iPhone uh, and Windows simul simultaneously. Uh, so let's get started, and I'm going to start with the uh, with the Windows version first. On the left-hand side of the screen, we've got the wells that are loaded, listed into columns. Then we've got the demo well, which is included in all the um, all the LogScope uh, downloads, both Windows and iPhone version. And then we have the import button here, which allows you to import last files, DLIST files, uh, CSV files, and do a variety of other tasks. Um, Cannot see the screen. In, in LogScope. So, so there we go. So there we've got the screen. So we've got the wells over here. And we've got demo, and then we've got import. Thank you, Akas. It's Difficult to see it when you've got the thing minimized. Anyway, moving right along, in the top right hand of the screen, we've got two icons. One is your account information. In there, there's an activate button uh, to enter code, a code that we may send to you. And then we've got the preferences, which is denoted by the gear wheel. Down the bottom of the screen, we've got the filter which allows you to change which wells you're seeing um, by name, um, the logs that may exist, the zones or formations it may penetrate, uh, and a variety of other things. Then we've got the map view, which we'll talk about when we get to the cross section. And then we've got WITSML, and we're also able to pull data in from TGS, well to desk Halibut Nextspace, and then we've got some options which uh, with refresh, uh, select all, select none, and sorting. Um, the ellipse at the end uh, shows and hides uh, the text underneath. So we'll go into the WITSML and show you how to load um, a data set from uh, a drilling well. So when you type or when you tap on the W, it brings up the WITSML uh, server box. And you don't type anything in there. You just simply click or tap on it. And then it gives you a list of WITSML servers that you might have. In this case, I've got the Baker WITSML server in there, but you might have servers from Interact and, and, and other uh, companies. So if I click on this, it will actually make a connection. Um, and then it comes back and it says I'm connected to the Baker server. And then I go in and I click on the wellbore and it gives me a list of the wellbores that I have access to. I'm going to select wellbore 2 or demo well 2 and I just click on that and then it asks for the sidetrack. Um, WITSML honors well, 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 sidetrack, and so on. So we click on that and we get this dialog box which allows us to select the logs. And just to recap, you've got the server you're using, uh, the well board that it's coming from, and the well board, and how you're going to name it. I'm going to call this Z uh, because I've previously got the data from this wellbore over here, this demo wellbore one. So I'll call it Z. 
And then to select the logs, I simply click on the log mapping. Uh, Logscope gives you the ability to add both arrays and curves. If you're using Interact, one would use just the Add New. With the Baker, because they store the arrays and have many curves, you have to uh, add as an array, and that allows you the option to add curves. So let's just add new and let's see what it presents us with next. So we get a list of curves that are available for us to load. And these are all the curves that are available in that well. I'm just going to load two curves. So I load two curves and I'm going to load the gamma ray. So I just basically click on the curves that I want, hit OK. It then says it's going to save it as a group. And Logscope allows you to have many groups, both discrete and continuous, in its structure. Here I can change the start and the end depth. I might change the end depth if I want extra blank space uh, below the end of the well, particularly if I've got something uh, that's actually growing. Uh, and I want it sort of halfway up the page. And then I just hit OK. And those uh, curves are there, and then OK, OK, and then it will pull up that well with whatever template you have defined in preferences. I prefer to have a triple combo wireline template. So the first thing I need to do is add those two curves to the template. And I do that by selecting the track. And I select the track by uh, tapping on it or clicking on it and it highlights yellow, and then I select a curve. So I'm going to choose the second curve, and it puts it in, and it gives it a scale of 0 uh, to 100. Now I'm going to put the second curve in the already existing gamma ray curve. So I can click on that, and it highlights it in yellow. Anything that's highlighted in yellow is selected, and you would have noticed that the menu changes and it's context sensitive with whatever function you're doing. And I'm going to edit that. And then I'm going to add in the Gamma Ray um, uh, 1AX. And then I click OK. Now, I want to change the scale of the second one so that it's set up to the same scale, so 0 to 200. And I'm going to change the color so that it's red. I can do that. And then I can change the pattern width. I can change where it clips. And it, um, it wraps uh, or it unwraps and so on. I'm going to leave that as it is. There's this option for stacking, which allows you to stack curves in a track. And then I just hit OK. Now the next step is you want to actually tell it to start populating the data from the WITSML. And that's done by simply clicking on the WITSML icon that you see up here. So I click on that, and it gives me three options. The setup allows me to go back in and change the logs that I'm pulling down for the WITSML. So if you forget a curve and you want to see it, you can go back in there and you can add it in. Then I've got the play mode, which is what I'll do now, which allows me to play the data. And you can watch wells that are drilling grow uh, using the play mode. Um, if you miss something and you need to catch up with a well, you can just say update to latest. And it will populate all the information up until the last point that's in that well. So let's just do the play mode. And when I click on that, I get these down the bottom here. I get down in the bottom right-hand corner, play, pause, exit. Um, obviously, if you click the ellipsis button, the text will disappear. Now, the other thing that you'll note is that you can only use the go to, the WITSML button, the refresh. You can change the plot scale, and you can change the actual scale uh, that's being plotted. So what we want to do now is we just want to do play. 
And then you'll see the word working appear down here. And then it, it just draws the information from the, um, uh, from the WITSML. And it will continue to work, continue to work polling for more information and updating the plot as it goes. So the next thing that we need to do is we exit out of this, and then I'm going to show you how to do the same thing in the um, in the uh, uh, um, iPhone version. So I'm just going to uh, quit my mail, and then just go into the iPhone version just here. So this is the iPhone version here, and I'm actually using my iPhone. Um, and it shows Logscope on the iPhone. Now we hide the functionality uh, for the WITSML in the setting button. And so I click on the WITSML button there and it brings up the same sort of menu. I'm asking for the WITSML server and then I'm going to choose the Baker server. And then it comes back and it asks me for the well bowl. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to choose the same well. And then I'm going to choose the same sidetrack. And then come back and I have to do the same thing here. So I'm going to add a Z to the name. And then I'm going to select the gamma ray logs uh, from, uh, from this well. So I click the add. And then I just type in gamma ray and then I select these two like so. And then done. And then done. And then done. And then I get the plot like so. And I can tap on here on the gamma ray and I can change that. Now, you'll notice this menu down the bottom, I'm using my finger, actually scrolls sideways. Now, you'll see a, a number of programs have this. The LinkedIn app on your phone is, an, is another one that has a similar sort of functionality. And I'm going to put in the gamma ray for that. And then I'm going to actually add to this track the curve. So when I have the um, track highlighted, it gives me all the things that can be added once the track is highlighted. So I add the curve and I'm going to add the second curve like so. And then we've tried to minimize the menu at the top, uh, probably a little too skinny for fat fingers, but um, I can still manage. Um, and I fill in the same thing. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to change the color to red. And this time, let's do a little bit different. Now let's do it with a dotted line, like so. So those two curves are set it up to plot in that track. And you could set up other curves, and then you could save it as a template. So if I scroll along this menu bar on the bottom, WITSML is right at the very end of it here. And when I click on that, it changes the menu. So I've got the same thing, set up, play mode, update to latest. So I just do the play mode. And instead of the menu being at the bottom, it's now at the top. And I hit the play button and it shows the same thing working. And then it will fill uh, the curves in like so. And it will continue to work. Uh, filling in uh, that data set. So that's the um, how you can use uh, the WITSML um, as, as it stands. Now, just a little different uh, from what I did uh, this morning is I'm going to show you how, um, what this looks like if you uh, collect all the, the information. So I exit out of this, and then I'm going to exit out of the well, and then I'm going to show you in the demo one well bore. And this is an analysis that we'll talk about later.
And I'm going to show you the full data set. And this is the full data set that's downloaded. And on your phone, you can see that it's collected all the data, including the image data uh, that's in that data set. So any WITSML feed that has arrays, as well as open hole data and test data, and any other information uh, that you want to display, you can actually pull it in and display it. And if we change the scale to the full plot, you can see that around 1500, there's this interval um, of, of interest to us. So what I'm going to do is just exit out of that. And then we're going to move to the example here to show you uh, some of the basic functionality um, in editing and moving the curves around and so on. So I'm going to tap on the demo well, and I'm going to create new because I've already got the example in here. And I've got the data set like so in the well. Yeah. And the first thing I was, I'm going to show is moving tracks. So if I tap on a track, um, it highlights the track, and obviously I can add curves to it. But if I tap again and hold down, it will turn orange, and this will allow me to move that track around like so. And I can move it back. Um, oops. You can also um, copy uh, tracks and paste them in. Um, the next thing uh, that I'm going to show is the shading. So if you tap on the shading, it brings you up to a menu where you have all sorts of different things, uh, different symbols and different colors for shading. And on the iPhone, you tap and hold down and then you drag the shading to where you want it to be, like so. And that's how you put the shading in. But um, not to use a cliche, but there's more. If you click on the shading and you edit the shading by just uh, tapping on it and then selecting shading, and we just go back to the uh, edit uh, button, uh, we can actually change the style of the shading to a number of different styles. You can have just a solid lithology, or you can have hydrocarbon or mineral. They do special things in the log analysis, or we can choose a log and have a log attribute. So in this case, we're going to change it to gamma ray, and we're going to change the scale to be 0 to 200. And then when we hit done, as you can see, it's now shaded using uh, using using uh, colors. The next thing that you can do is you can actually edit and patch uh, data. So if we tap on a well, on a curve, I should say, and highlight it, we can actually not only edit it, uh, but we can do things like patching. And when we hit patching, you can actually set to missing, or you can actually draw in like so. And that's how you do it. And you process that, and it saves that information. So I'm going to cancel out of that, and I'm going to cancel out of this well, and then I'm going to move uh, to the back to the windows and show a similar functionality. So here, we exit out of the uh, demo wellbore one z and then we go into the demo well, uh, which is the same data set, and we've got the uh, analysis here. But I'm going to load the WITSML template here. By the way, data between the iPhone and the Windows platform are interchangeable. You can change the data as an you, you can interchange the data between the two platforms very easily. So this is the data set um, shown here. And again, we've got uh, a very beautiful um, a gas sand, gas saturated sand here. Um, the resistivity is showing 
very nice response and so on. So let's go back and let's show you some of the editing and, and the plot functionality on the iPhone, so on, on the Windows tablet. So if we click on the demo well and create a new one, we can show the same functionality here. So again, you click on a track, it turns yellow. If you click or tap and hold, you can drag that track to where you want it to be, or you can drag it back to where you want it to be, um, like so. You also see that you have the ability to copy and you can actually paste. Um, you'll also see that um, on some functionality, you've got an undo and a redo. So we'll just um, uh, delete, undo that. And that undoes uh, that last step. So the shading, the shading on Windows works a similar way. So we click on that shading and then we can drag the shading and drop it wherever we like. And if we click on the shading, we can choose the shading and then we can go up here and choose edit. And we can change it to, uh, for example, a log and a gamma ray and change the scaling to 200. And again, uh, the shading uh, is shown there. You can make the shading uh, cover, say, 50% of a track, 25% of a track, or whatever you wish. Now, uh, the editing functionality, uh, we're going to show you a couple of things here. So if I click on a curve, I can actually do the patch. And again, it's exactly the same thing. I can just do that. Um, in addition, we have rubber band depth shifting. So if I click on shift and do the depth shifting, the baseline shifting is for SP depth shifting. I can actually move uh, the curve up and down and do that kind of thing. Um, in depth shifting. I can then click on um, this, the last icon at the end, and I can actually shift all the logs and add other logs in. So whatever shift you do with one log, you can actually apply to many logs. So that's the, um, uh, the basics of uh, you know, the plotting and so on with the um, uh, with the example well. So I'm going to exit out of that. And then the next thing that we're going to talk about is the cross-section functionality. And the cross-section functionality involves multiple wells. Uh, normally I use the Blino wells, but in this case I'm going to use the Corali and the Pelican wells because they use uh, a form of shading that we call RGB. It allows you to assign three logs to red, green, and blue, and it blends the colors on the plots. So let's uh, have a look how to do uh, the cross section. If in the well list, I click on the wells, uh, you can see that once I select multiple wells, I have additional options that show up down the bottom. And these include remove, delete, archive. Archive is very useful. It's our internal format. Archive is absolutely everything. It's a bit like uh, Mincom's Geolog ASCII format. Um, it, it archives everything. Uh, and you can transfer it around the internet, give it to colleagues, and they can see what's there. You can duplicate. Um, we've still got the filter function but we've got the cross-section function. I'm not going to use the cross-section function from here because I'm actually going to go into the map view. So I'm going to untick those, and then I'm going to click on the map view. With the mouse, uh, when you tick wells, you have to use the right mouse click. 
Um, and here I have all the wells. If you have wells from all over the world, obviously the map will cover the whole world and you can uh, move about and navigate the map and, and find your wells. The wells I want are just here. So I'm just going to just uh, increase the, um, the size a little bit and you can see the wells there. Now to select the wells, I just hold the mouse button down and I just draw a circle around the wells that I want to use in my cross section. Now, it wouldn't be fair if I drew a cross section now because I actually want to see where those wells are. And down the bottom when you select wells, I've got the ability to zoom to all or zoom to selected. And I want to zoom to selected. So I zoom to the selected and I have these wells in this uh, line here. And I'm going to do a section from southwest to northeast. So in order to do that, I use the projection line button here. So I click the projection line button and I can choose pick. And then I just draw the line in like so. In its default mode, Logscope assumes that you want to do a projection line. So it projects the wells to the line. But you're saying, well, I want to do a fence diagram. You know, I want, you know, fence. So you can do that by clicking on the well line down here. This is the well line. So I click on that and I select fence. And there we have it. It changes the line to a fence. And I've got the wells there. So I want to do a cross section. So the cross section is the X button. So I click on the cross section. And the first thing it does, it gives us a configuration menu and I can change the horizontal spacing, uh, the spacing between wells if it's fixed, uh, the plot width, vertical scale, the depth units, uh, the plot reference, uh, measured depth or TVD, um, the datum reference, uh, or the section range. And it's quite laborious to always have to fill this slot in. So we've created a system of templates. So up here we have templates. You can save your own or you can actually load. And I've got quite a number of templates through here. And I'm going to go to my uh, template here, which is called CE Test Perf. So I put that in and you can see now that it's set the um, all the parameters, the vertical scale, it's changed it to meters. We're going to use measured depth. The reference datum is zone. And then the section range is going to be the patch warrior. And three zones up, one zone down below that. But if I click on that, I can actually change it to uh, from zone to depth. I can actually do a physical depth above this zone. For example, minus 100 feet. Uh, but I'm going to leave this as it is. And then we're just going to do the cross section here. So, and there we have the cross section of the wells. And at the top, you see it's got the distance in meters between the wells. And you can scroll left or right across the cross section. Um, and up at the top, you can go back into the configure and you can actually change the plot, the cross section. Um, on the fly to include different uh, plots and so on and so forth. Uh, you can produce uh, plots using PDF, CGM or TIFF. They're true to scale plots, so you can spit them out to a plotter. The scale, you can actually change the scale. So we zoom this section to fit or zoom to depth scale fit. Useful if you're um, correlating. And then we have the zone button. And the zone button allows us to edit zones. So I just click on that and edit. And then here I have the ability to import from a CSV file and I can save the zones as I've edited. And I'm just going to show one particular function. If I put a formation top in here, 
and call this C for coal. I have it there and I can move it up or down. And then when I go to the next well, Logscope is a smart cookie and it remembers the name and it correlates like so and so on and so forth uh, across we go uh, like so and it does that in the cross section. I'm just going to discard these um, to keep my data set pristine. Uh, you can see that um, these wells have all been processed using um, uh, using a Silty Shane exam model. Uh, but let's say we wanted to go in and look at one well in detail. Maybe we didn't like the depth shift on the gamma ray or whatever. Uh, we can actually double click on that well and it'll take us straight into to that particular well. And again, you can do, uh, you can play around uh, with the plots like so. Um, also, another thing to note is the plot in the individual wells does not have to be the same as in the cross section. And when we come out of the cross section, um, it will draw the cross section uh, exactly as we had it before. So that is the uh, cross section mode. There is uh, just one last thing that I'll show you here. The LAM or the log analysis multi, uh, if this is active in your system, you can actually click on that and it will use the wells in the cross section to do the multi well log analysis. So if we go out of this, I'm then going to do the same thing, uh, same cross section on the iPhone. So we go to the iPhone. And I'll just uh, uh, go back here and click on the iPhone. And I'm just going to swipe to open it up. And again, we have the same wells on our iPhone like so. Uh, you can see them there. At the top, we've got the map, the filter, uh, import. Import is a wonderful feature. It allows you to import from any cloud or a connected server uh, to your iPhone. In addition to obviously WITSML, you can import data from last part by simply double tapping in the in the in the mail. Let's go to the map view and do the cross section. So I've got the cross of uh, the map view here. So I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to move to the center just a little bit, then circle those wells, and then I want to zoom to selected. So I can zoom to select it. Um, a lot of people find it hard to believe, but exactly the same functionality is on the iPhone, the iPad, as on the window. You can do exactly the same things. So we're going to put the projection line, but in this case, the projection line is written as a projection line. And we just pick it, and we just draw the projection line like so. And uh, we can change it to uh, a fence diagram using well lines. But this time, I want to leave it as uh, a projected line. And then I get, go to cross section. And then I'm going to load the same template. And it's here. And it's got all the wells loaded in. And then I hit done. And I've got the wells in cross section. Um, the other thing is the iPhone and the iPad are fast, very fast, and the performance will not disappoint. So if I want to change the, um, uh, the zones on here, I can just tap on the zones, edit, and I can do the same thing here. Call this C, and then I move across to the next well, put there C, I can move this up or down like so, and then I can save those. So I'm going to discard those, uh, but it would automatically join them up if I save them. The scale on here, I can change to scale to fit, so you can actually see more. And in plotting, you can actually do the same thing, but on the iPhone, you can plot to PDF or PNG 
well, they are true to scale. If you have an air print printer, you can send that PDF to your local printer. And there we go. And, and that's it. That's the um, cross section on the, um, on the iPhone. So let's go back to the windows and get to the real meat of doing a petrophysical evaluation. So in the petrophysical evaluation, we've got this demo wellbore that we have uh, downloaded or, or that's building uh, or growing. Um, and we need to do an analysis uh, to say bring our team up to date. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the list view and then I'm just going to click on select none, get rid of those. And then I'm going to click on the demo wellbore. So doing an individual log analysis, I go in and there are a number of things that one needs to uh, take into consideration when doing analysis. The header information that's at the top of a logging run is really important. And you can see here that LogScope has the ability to collect that header information for a well. So let's just click on that. And in the first thing, because it is, this is a demo well, we've only got the demo well um, um, filled in. And you can fill in all the other fields there. You can add uh, additional fields in there. Uh, you can add your logo by clicking on there. And we've got a view button here. And you can view the general, which is the top part of the logging run header that you see. And then you've got the run information. And then you've got the remarks. Now, the run information is quite important because this information, LogScope tries as best it can to use all the information that you enter into a well in performing the log analysis. So in this one, uh, we've entered this as run one, but as you can see, you can add runs, you can have many runs, and we have an abbreviated list of parameters here. And these are the important parameters um, for actually doing an interpretation. We have the depth of the driller, the depth of the logger, but then the most critical reading is the first and the last reading, or more particularly the first reading. And this tells us that the deepest depth that the logs were run. And then that is used to uh, allow the calculation of the temperature gradient. If you have multiple runs, it will build a temperature gradient based on the maximum recorded temperature of each of those runs. LogScope can also use an external temperature curve as well in the log analysis, uh, but this by far and away is the quickest way to, uh, to do an analysis without having to build your own temperature curve. The bit size used for caliper, uh, cutoff differential caliper, those sorts of things. And the oil-based mud here we're assuming is oil-based mud, or it can be water-based mud. But the density is important for doing the geomechanics in the well. Next parameters that are important are the mud resistivity. Now you fill in this parameter and because this is all based mud, we filled it in as 9,999, similarly here. And then we've got the temperatures uh, filled in degrees Fahrenheit as 75 to 73 and so on. If you tap on the temperature, you can actually change on the fly the temperature to be whatever. Degrees Fahrenheit, degrees C, similarly with the feet, you can change them to meters on the fly. You can change the density on the fly, grams per cc or pounds per gallon, and, and so on and so forth. Log scope, as I said, shows the data as groups. So we have the groups here. So we've got the density uh, image group shown here. 
And if we click on groups, we can show the gamma ray group, which is four curves. And then we have the group of the logs. Uh, and all this is downloaded from the WITSML. And we've got all the data. And you can scroll across and you can see the data. If you click on a value, you can actually change the data. So be very careful when filling information in. You, you can change information like so. You can change the units by clicking on a header, edit. You can also delete curves uh, from within the data set. Uh, so it's very powerful functionality there. The import button allows you to import data uh, from a CSV file as discrete data, or if you've got data in a spreadsheet, you can copy and paste it in. Uh, the go to button allows you to go to a particular depth. We can change the depths to be feet or meters. A logscope really doesn't care um, because you can display either unit. The plot functionality here it is where we're going to go through and describe uh, the log analysis and the log interpretation. So here you can see that we've got some functions across the top here, and we have the log analysis function here. And we're going to go through a few of the key things to do with the log analysis. The vclay, uh, the porosity, RT, computation of uh, saturation, volumetrics, and TOC calculation. So we click on the uh, log analysis uh, button and we have the processes. And Logscope runs all the processes simultaneously. Or, uh, but you can actually switch them on and off by clicking off these buttons. And we've included this because we know that there are people who like to do things step by step and build up a picture that way. We recommend, HRP recommends, that you run all of them at, at once. Down the bottom here, we've got rock mechanics, foul gas, CVM, Sigma, and NMR. You may switch those off, uh, but really, there is no performance uh, hit if you leave them on and you run them all at once. The next thing is the logs. Uh, for a log analysis, it needs to know what is your resistivity logs, what are your caliper logs for a bad hole effect, what is your gamma ray, and what is your density. A log scope will populate these uh, from what it understands, and it will fill uh, those curves in. Then we have the parameters, and the parameters are a massive long list. Uh, but we've added some uh, features in here that if you hover over the uh, parameter box, you can actually type in slash p colon, and then we're going to choose the v clay. So the v clay, it shows you all the parameters that are dependencies on the v clay computation. And the first one I'm going to focus on is the V-clay equation. We have the gamma ray and the density neutron, but we can choose any and all of these uh, to actually calculate the V-clay. They are all computed at the same time, and they all have their individual uh, curves. The name of the game is to get all your V-clay indicators representing, as best you can, the same clay content in the rock because that means that you're uh, getting close to uh, some kind of consistent model um, showing the data. Um, the V-clay that's selected is selected by default to be the minimum, uh, but you can actually choose one of a number of different uh, curves, which is minimum, Hodges lemon, down to weighted average. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show in the V clay computation. Um, the next one I'm going to go to is the porosity. These are uh, the main sort of processes. 
in, in terms of interpretation. So I guess the first parameter I'm going to talk about is the neutron tool. Logscope has a variety of neutron tools in, uh, in there uh, for obviously the cross plots. And we've selected the Baker Hughes 8.25 uh, neutron tool. And as we work down here, when we get to the Sonic, we can choose either Wiley or Raymer Hunt Gardner. A few questions have come up about how Logscope actually settles on a final by apparent. And it's calculated in an order of precedence. It's not calculated um, you know, with one missing and so on. But you can, by excluding curves, force it to use a particular curve. So um, based on the presence of data and bad hole indicators, it will use the cross plot porosity first to give you a fire parent. If that doesn't exist, it will try and use the density curve. If that doesn't exist, it will use the sonic. If that doesn't exist, it will go to the neutron. And if that doesn't exist, it will use a combination of phi max and the uh, big clay that's calculated uh, to calculate um, the phi apparent. Uh, so that's kind of how the porosity is, is uh, determined. Obviously, phi effective and phi total are calculated once you've got your V clay uh, uh, content and your phi apparent uh, calculated. The next processor is how do we calculate the RT? Uh, Logscope has a um, a kind of a proprietary tornado chart methodology built in that uses the three um, uh, the three uh, basically the three resistivity curves uh, from either the induction or the lateral log tool and tries to produce an RT. In addition to that, you have the ability uh, to put your own ERT uh, curve in the logs, and I'll just show you that here. So you've got your ability to put an ERT in there. But it will use the ILD, ILM, and the micro resistivity log um, for uh, the calculation of the RT. So the calculation of the saturation, so I'll just go to that one. So we just go to the saturation down here. which is phi and the saturation. And again, it shows all the parameters that are related there. And the two I wanted to draw your attention to are the saturation equation. A lot of people think uh, Logscope is dumbed down and stupid, but we are rather sophisticated in that we have the ability to use any and all of the major saturation equations used, both conductivity and resistivity. Uh, in there. We have down here uh, the ability to specify the model. So in this well, because it's plastic, I'm going to use a silty Shaley SAM model, uh, but Logscope has the ability to use a basic, what we call a deterministic mineral model, a silty Shaley SAM model, and the dual water model. So we're going to use the silty Shaley SAM model here. Um, it has the ability to do hydrocarbon density correction, and that will change the flag. In this case, we're saying it's gas, and I'll show you how the hydrocarbon density works when we get to the cross plots. So that's the uh, phi SW. Um, the volume metrics are calculated, and the parameters uh, that um, that it needs are shown here. And it uses, when you use the deterministic mineral model, it uses the UMTA, MTA cross plot. 
in the deterministic mineral model, it will also use the Robert Elphick if it doesn't have a photoelectric effect or if those curves are deemed to be unusable because of bad hole. And these are kind of all the parameters in there for the deterministic mineral model. Um, we do a TOC computation, but that's easier to show on the cross plots. And then we'll talk about a simple uh, hydrocarbon bottom report. So let's get started on, on the anal analysis. Basically, what I do first is I use uh, the default parameters in LogScope to populate an output group called LA. You can choose whatever name you want, uh, but then you just hit process and it creates that data set. And then we go to the next tab across the bottom, which is the cross plot. And here we have a cross plot. Um, this, we're at the picket plot. Another thing about LogScope is it always remembers the last place you were at when doing an interpretation. Before I move on, just a few points about the setup here. The sidebar, this thing here, uh, can be switched on and off uh, by just clicking that. And then across the top, you can choose the zone. Or you can choose region, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then you've got the plots here, which you click on this, or you can click on these to scroll back through the plots. I'm going to go back to the density neutron. And then I'm going to do use this parameter here and lock the scale because I don't want it to move whilst I'm uh, playing with it with your finger and stuff. It can move about. So you define where you want your uh, N phi. The neutron is telling us that these sands have excavation effect, but we still define our sand line, uh, our matrix line as being here. We can move the matrix line down here and it will automatically assume that we've got limestone and down here and it will automatically assume that we've got dolomites. So I'll just bring this back uh, to sandstone. The phi max uh, is the maximum porosity that you allow in the system. If you have reasonable data, there's no reason to move that point. So we can adjust the things here, um, the processes. We can change the logs uh, from the cross plot. And we can look at uh, the parameters that relate uh, to this particular cross plot in a list down the side here. The next thing that we can do uh, once we've adjusted our parameters here is we can actually look at the data as a plot view by just clicking on the log analysis and it shows the plot. You can create your own plots, uh, which are stored in global. So you may have a favorite set of curves that you like looking at when you're looking at cross plot, or we've got the built-in and I like the composite one, and that's here. And it shows the V-clay from uh, the gamma ray and the neutron density, somewhat similar, not the same, but somewhat similar. And then we've got the uh, saturation and the porosity shown here. And then we've got the lithology shown in the third track. The several things that we can do when we're in here is if we click on add a region in the cross plots, we can actually circle a bunch of points and it will show us where those points are. Not only can we do that, but we can also highlight a bunch of points on here. And we can actually save those as different types, as a region, a bad hole flag, or a facey zone. Um, don't have time to talk about facey zone, but they're like a subzone of a zone. 
So I'm just going to exit out of this here. So the neutron density is all we have in terms of porosity tools for this, um, uh, this particular well. Um, we're going to go to the RWA gamma ray, which allows us to set the gamma ray minimum and maximum, and also set the salinity that we're using for this uh, particular data set. And the parameters are updated contextually with each plot. Uh, so you can actually change, uh, as you change cross plots, this list of parameters will change. If we change the, uh, the RW parameter here, it will change up here, but it will also change the salinity and the RW75 value. And if we move it back here, it will change it again. And we have the value there. So we also have the, the, um, uh, the humble and the picket plot. So you can set the data here. And we have the ability to set a uh, function for M. We'll talk about that on, on the picket plot. Or um, we've got, as I say, the picket plot. And if you move this point here, you will change M. And we change it to 1.88. So if I change it to 2 here, you'll see the point will jump. And you can change the saturation equation. And you can change the M function to be either uh, the shell function, which is um, decreasing saturation with decreasing porosity, or the Bore function, which is for when you have fractures, uh, which is increasing saturation, hydrocarbon saturation, that is, with decreasing porosity, taking into account the fact that you have um, fractures. So we'll leave this as is. It's a fairly straight line across. It's not bending down bending up. Um, so we'll leave that like so. Um, we can actually um, play with the um, we can actually play with the um, uh, the TSC uh, and we've created several plots and we've got the TSC uh, defined from the um, density and rather than overlaying the curves, we've defined it so that you pick a point that's the minimum resistivity and density that you think represents clays. And the clays are obviously uh, warmer colors here, blue being a colder color. And then we can do that for that and for the neutron and for the sonic if we had a sonic. So once we done, have that done, we can just hit the process button and it will process uh, the well. Now I'm just going to go back uh, to the density neutron uh, and then go back to the plot view. And the plot view is this. And in the templates, we have loaded with log scope. Um, in the advanced section, uh, some basic templates uh, for uh, the advanced log analysis. We also have one to show the rock mechanics. But I'm just going to go for the advanced log analysis template. And it's going to display the data like so. It's showing the data in meters. So I'm going to change that to feet. And I'm going to change the scale to 600. And then we can sort of see our reservoir interval there. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you do a quick analysis like this is you want a hydrocarbon volume report. So when we click on the report, we can actually generate a hydrocarbon volume report. So I click on the hydrocarbon volume report. The default is to output it as a CSV file but I can output it 
as a spreadsheet. And when you output it as a spreadsheet, it will add a sheet to the, the, the spreadsheet book um, showing each zone and histograms. In this case, if I use the three of um, uh, porosity, permeability, and saturation. But I'm going to change this uh, using templates because you can define your own templates. And I'm going to use the hydrocarbon with the TOC. UCS and brittleness added in, and that gives me six histograms. And in the histograms, you can use net, pay, or gross. Um, obviously, I'm using gross for the TOC, UCS, and brittleness. Uh, and the, this is defined by the cutoffs that I've got here. And then I just hit OK, and that generates it, generates it in meters. Can generate it in feet, and I'm going to save that to the desktop, and then I'm going to open that up. So I'll just overwrite, and then we're going to just open um, my uh, desktop, and I'm just going to uh, open up uh, the Crossplot, and you can see I have these histograms in this zone, and then I have a summary, which is a summary of all the zones and all the parameters listed there. And this is generated automatically. So, save that, and so on. So, the same functionality is available on the iPhone. So, I'm now going to repeat. Uh, the same analysis on the iPhone. So here, I just um, um, unset that, and then I'm going to select none, and then I'm going to go back to the list view. And I have the wells listed here, and the well I want to look at is the demo well ball well and that's here and again just to show you what it looks like on the on the iphone i tap on the log analysis and i have all the processes listed here and they've all got these little green buttons so i can switch them on and off uh, the same the same way i can go to the log view and i have all the logs set up and I've got the parameter view, exactly the same parameters, exactly the same functionality as on the Windows version. And then I can hit run, and that will populate uh, the data set for me. I can then go to the cross plots, and I have the, uh, the neutron density uh, cross plot here, and I can move the points like so. I can flick out the log analysis tab here. And again, if I tap on the log analysis, I can get uh, my plot down the side. And if I hit load, I can show pretty much anything I want. I can go back and then I can hide that. And I can do the analysis exactly the same way as I would on the Windows machine. So if I go back, um, oops, I didn't want to uh, go back out of there. So if I go back here, I can produce the plot. And I'm just going to use the, the log analysis. Change the scale to 600. Change the depth to, meter, to feet. And I've got the interval here. And I can do the HVR here. Uh, but this time I'm going to show you just a simple, the simple three histogram model as a spreadsheet. And I just set that up. You can set up all your cutoffs um, in the log analysis, or you can change them here. And I just hit done, and it generates a file, and I'm going to open that in numbers. I'm just going to choose uh, numbers. Oops. 
I'll just uh, export it and save it to the desktop and replace. And then I'll just open open it on the desktop uh, from the iPhone. What are we going here? So I go to the drive. I want my desktop. Then I want this. And there we have the summary, and there we have the histogram um, showing the distribution of the porosity, permeability, and saturation uh, for that particular zone. Now that's um, pretty much um, the, the single well analysis. And the last section um, of this webinar, I'm going to show uh, the multi well analysis. So we'll click on this, we'll get out of the demo well ball. Um, just before leaving that, one of the final things um, I should say is that um, this well is deviated. So you can actually use the deviation plot with the inclination azimuth to actually display the well deviated, and that functionality works on both Windows and the iPhone uh, as, as well. So I'm going to use the blinder wells to show the um, multi-well log analysis. And again, I can select the wells in the list view by right mouse clicking or tap and hold to select them. Uh, but I'm actually going to use the map view. So I just click on the map view and the wells are here. So I just sort of um, bring them into focus and I'm going to circle them. So the interesting thing about circling wells is that you can circle wells and exclude particular wells if you want to exclude them. And once I've circled those wells, I can choose the lamb view, but let's just zoom to selected so you see where they are. They're located like so. Uh, to give you an idea of the terrain, it's not very interesting, but you can actually change the map and you can see um, the wells and where they're located um, in, in, in kind of uh, the aerial view in Bing. Um, and we select the log analysis multi. Now, the log analysis multi requires wells to have, uh, requires for there to be a parameter store for those uh, particular wells. And in this case, um, I have a project set up. Uh, once you choose uh, a parameter store and you enter the multi-well log analysis, uh, you can actually save that as a project and it will populate everything and save it as you last left it. So uh, you can come back into a multi-well log analysis like so. So I'm going to click on the master well and I'm just going to explain the layout. Across the top, we have project, it allows you to update that project file that you saw and save where you're at. Then we've got the processes. This allows you to select and switch on and off the processes as you would um, in the same way as you would a single well. Then we've got the inputs and log scope, uh, it has an alias table, but there may be occasions where uh, the logs have been called a different name. You can go in and select a log and actually uh, propagate that selection uh, through a set of wells that you have 
uh, built in that you've selected in, in this list. Um, so the parameter store here allows you to do parameter mapping. And this is an interesting feature. If you have more than one parameter well in uh, a multi-well log analysis, you can choose the nearest neighbor and it will choose the nearest well to each target well, which is denoted D, uh, to process it. Or you can do master well. You can just have one well and it will use that well regardless of where the wells are in, in, in the field. So that's the parameter store there. And then you can actually set parameters and have them set back to the parameter store using this here. So if you're dealing with a field where you have very little information on the MUD properties, but you know the MUD system is approximately the same in every well, they're using production water, for example, you can set the, uh, uh, the MUD resistivity using that parameter. Um, you can update individual or all zones or all wells using um, this last uh, option here. Uh, the options allow us to switch on the preferred well status rather than looking at the parameters for the parameters on the cross plots from the parameter store. It will actually pull the information from the well in focus. And you can also say, well, I only want to see the active well. And what that does is that changes the cross, changes the, um, uh, the, uh, the plot to only show uh, the well that's in focus. I'm just going to lock the scale on this so it doesn't jump about on me like so. So then we've got the formations and you can see all the formations here. You can see a grid missing uh, and, and multi, multi edit zones. You can select multiple zones and edit them all at the same time. Obviously, the process button will process. And then we come to the other features of, of the multi well uh, log analysis. We've got the list of wells here. And you can see them as a list of wells, like so. Or you can uh, choose different wells. Um, I'm going back. I like to see all the wells, all the data plotted at the same time, because then I wells that are anomalous will, will sort of pop out. And so we just click on that, and that will show us that, that, that well here. So that's this view. You can go to a map view, and it will show all the wells that you've got as triangles. So if I just do that, and the diamond well is your parameter well. We just click on the map, and we go back to the list view. So if I go to uh, the cross plots, I have all the cross plots here, um, but the custom allows me to look at custom uh, cross plots that I might create and store as global cro cross plots. And it allows me to see them and cross plot multiple data sets on, on the one cross plot. I can scroll through the cross plots like so. I can refresh them like so. I can select data by doing this and selecting points here. And it will tell me which wells those points come from. I'll just uh, unselect and then select again. And I can just uh, select on the site cross plot and it'll show me where those particular points lie in the analysis. So that's kind of how that's done. And the final plot here is the uh, depth index plot or it can be the um, uh, list of parameters. 
and switch back like so. If I want to change the parameters here and I move them, they will populate this zone here. And you see, and these parameters will be used when I process uh, uh, process all the wells. Down here, and I'll just click back to, uh, it gives a histogram of any of the curves that you pick, and you can actually perform normalization on the curves. So if I'm going to normalize the curves, I just click normalize, and I can normalize by zone, all the zones, all the master well, and I can just click uh, OK, and it will come back with the normalization parameters uh, for that. Logscope is non-destructive with the normalization in that it will actually create a copy of the curve in the LA file with these normalization parameters applied. So it's non-destructive in the sense that your information is not destroyed. So how do we process? We simply process by hitting the process button and we can process by zone. We can process all zones and all wells at the same time. And I'm just gonna let this run. To give you an idea of the speed, on this particular machine, which is MacBook Pro, uh, running parallels under coherence, um, yeah, under um, uh, Windows 10 under parallels, it takes about 45 minutes to process 1800 wells. And um, that's, this is kind of uh, pretty much it. When this is done, we can use the hydrocarbon bottom report here to create a text file uh, showing all the parameters, all the um, net pay for all the wells in one single file. So we'll just go ahead and do that in, in a, once this completes. And when it completes, Logscope will actually process all the wells regardless of whether there are errors and when it finishes it will give you this box and it will show you the processing set um, and the time taken for each one and if we click out if there are any zones inside of wells that haven't been processed you will get an uh, unprocessed uh, line down here and you can do the same thing there so once we've done our multi-well log analysis, the last thing we want to do is produce uh, a hydrocarbon bottom report, and we can produce this as text uh, in feet, and we just hit OK. We can also send it to a shape file as well. And we save it as a, uh, a multi-well uh, file. And I'll just show you um, is the multi well uh, data here, and this is the analysis of all those wells and all the analytical parameters and the pay zones uh, for all of them, uh, like so. And that's kind of the basic um, uh, multi well analysis. Um, in Logscope. Now, if I exit out of here, the multi well functionality doesn't just stop with being able to process um, and provide log analysis on multi wells. You can actually choose the multi well analysis here, and you have all the basic functionality here. You can do multi well log rename, multi well last export. And you can actually run your own scripts. So if I load a script here, uh, like uh, HVR flag, I can actually run this script, which is written in Python, and it will run it on, on all the wells here. So that um, pretty much is um, 
uh, the webinar. And I now. Nick, uh, uh, do you want to say something about the different types of data, wildline, LWD, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, Logscope can pull in wildline, LWD, core data, um, and um, uh, pre formation pressure data uh, into it. And you can actually display all, all of that information. Um, yes, uh, are there any any questions? A word on documentation, please. Uh, the documentation is on our site support.logscope.net. And you can access that from our main web page by just clicking on support. And that'll take you to that website. Um, and that's manuals and videos. Yeah, manuals, videos, step-by-step -step guides, uh, particularly for using the multi-well, uh, particularly for doing uh, things like uh, resampling data um, and so on and so forth in there. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it. Um, there's a question about log normalization. Uh, the log normalization, um, as I was showing in here, uh, is done down here as part of the LAM, and you can normalize any curve uh, in there. And when you switch to the output, it shows you the, the results uh, of, of the normalization. Uh, if you set um the log to a uh, a resistivity log it will do the normalization and it will actually use uh, kind of a a logarithmic method uh, to allow you to do normalization but i just kind of steer clear of doing that um, and when you set up all those normalizations they are carried those parameters are carried in each well, um, so you don't lose them uh, at all. Um, so uh, Logscope does have the ability to do uh, log normalization. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Oh, thanks. If there are no more questions, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and your attendance. And um, uh, look forward to talking Record recorded version more about um, about Logscope. Uh, the recorded version will be up in about a day. Yep. Of this uh, of this. Uh, webinar. Uh, thanks very much.